Hey guys, I'm sure some of you have heard of a game. It was called Settlers of Catan. Uh, it's a very popular board game. Uh, I'm not advertising it, although I do like to play it. Um, but I think it's a pretty good game for showing something that we're learning about in math right now and something that you might encounter if you play this game in the future. Um, now, Settlers of Catan, it won the Spiel de Jahre, which is the game of the year in German. It's a German award for the best board game around the world. And uh, it won in 1994, and it's still a popular game. Uh, how this game works is in the standard version, up to four people are competing against each other. And the story goes that there's people uh, trying to colonize an island, I believe, or set up settlements on an island called Catan. And in the game, you're trying to get what are called victory points. And if you get 10 victory points, you win the game. Um, those vic points can be uh, from buying different things, having a long road, or the biggest army, those sorts of things. Now, on the map, there's a bunch of different hexagons, and if you build beside a hexagon, the different colored resources around it uh, enable you to get these cards that you then can buy the things that can give you victory points. So I have a tile here, it's yellow, which is for wheat, and there's a number on it, it's 11. Now, that means that if there's a settlement, for example, this one, that's been built on the corner of it, when an 11 is rolled, so with these two dice, let's say it's an 11, oh, it actually is. So an 11 is rolled, then the person who is the white houses or the white team uh, would get 11, or sorry, would get one of these resources because this is here. And with that, they can then buy things that can get them victory points. And by doing that, they are more likely to win the game. Now, here are all the numbers that could be on the uh, board. Um, the different options that there could be, uh, the numbers that are rolled. If you think about it, if two dice are being rolled, uh, there's no possibility for it to be one because the least you could have on each die is one. And what you do when you roll is you add them up. So here there's four and there's six, which four plus six is 10. So it would be whoever has settlements around 10 would get to get their resources. Um, there's no possibility for it to be one, and there's no possibility for it to be greater than 12. Um, the only number that's not here that you could roll is seven. And seven's a special number because in the game, there's this thing called the robber, where you get to go move onto one of the spaces and you get to steal a resource from someone. Uh, it makes the game a little frustrating at times, but it also makes it a little more fun. Now back on, uh, a previous lesson, it would have been 7.6, uh, page 287, number one to four. On question 1C, you actually already made the tree diagram that can help you actually solve what the theoretical probability of this happening. The theoretical probability of each number getting rolled. So here, remember you took the six numbers that are on the first die that gets rolled, so pretend it's the red one, and then you took the six possible numbers that the yellow one could be rolled after. So if it's a two first, it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, it's five, two and five was two and five, which adds up to seven. So what you need to do, if you didn't, is take your sample space and add the two numbers, add the two numbers, add the two numbers until you get all the outcomes. And then, you're going to count up how many of the outcomes are each of the possible numbers. So each of these possible numbers. So if we count through, we look through all these options, how many twos are there? There's one right at the top and there's no more twos that are possible. So for twos, there was only one option. What about threes? There's this, there's threes, you know, when one dice is, sorry, one die is one and the other one is two. That's one option or the opposite, right? So there was two options for three and four count through how many there are. Pause the video if you didn't do this and then do count that up and come up with what your theoretical sample space is. So in Google Classroom where you likely found this video, uh, there was also a student sheet. So what I want you to do is beside the outcome numbers, I want you to write down what the theoretical values are. I've already typed a couple of them in because they're the ones that I just wrote down on a piece of paper. 
there's already some typed in. Um, I want you to fill this in for the theoretical. And then right here, this is the experimental. Okay, I want you to actually take the dice and you're going to go until the number right here where the zero is equals 36, okay? It's going to automatically add it up as you go, okay? So let's say you roll the dice and you get an 11, you're going to put one there. You roll the dice and you get a six. You roll and you get a seven. You roll again and it's a seven. Just add one more to it. So turn that into a two. And then if you got an eight, it's a one. Just keep rolling. And I want you to roll until you have 36 times. After that, I'm then going to take it and I'll copy and paste it into the other file that you'll be able to see with what the theoretical, uh, or sorry, what the what each student will have. So Mr. Webb will be here, maybe someone's here, another person. And then in this column, it's averaging what it is. And we're gonna compare these average numbers to the theoretical and see how close we are. So you're going to be getting some marks for your calculation of the theoretical outcome. So each of these, you're gonna get a mark. And then you're also gonna get a mark for the experimental. Don't fake results, actually do the rolling 36 dice. It took me about three minutes to do. So uh, it doesn't take too long. Be careful as you type. If you make a mistake, you accidentally type the wrong number, uh, Control and Z at the same time can undo that. Um, and we'll discuss this as well on Thursday during that the Zoom chat. If you have any questions about it, please put it in the comments and uh, on Google Classroom.